Hey everyone, welcome to the Acrobatic Arts Podcast. I'm Loren, and I will be interviewing some of the top leaders and innovators from the dance and acrobatic industry. If you are a teacher, performer, student, or a lifelong learner like myself, you are sure to find these episodes intriguing and full of inspiration. Acrobatic Arts is passionate about providing current and relevant information for everyone. So please, sit back and enjoy as we share our passion with you and the world. Today, we have a very special episode. I am speaking with Mandy Yip, the founder, CEO, and the Canadian Division Manager for Acrobatic Arts. Let's listen as she talks about her business and how it has adapted for the pandemic. Hi, Mandy. Hi, Lauren. I'm so excited to speak with you today. I'm so excited to be on the brand new Acrobatic Arts podcast. This is exciting. Well, welcome. Uh, now, we've known each other for many, many years, but I think there's lots of listeners out there who might not know uh, your story. So why don't you start by telling us a little bit about uh, your background and how you grew up? Sure. So I grew up in a small uh, place in Saskatchewan. Um, I was at a multidisciplinary studio called Martin School of Dancing, where they teach tap, jazz, ballet, acrobatics, all the stuff, and baton twirling. And uh, I absolutely loved everything about the studio. I just loved being there. I loved learning. I loved the teachers. I loved my friends there. And I really couldn't get enough of, um, of the of everything that there was to do with studio life. Unfortunately, my parents didn't have a ton of money at the time. So that meant that I couldn't take all of the classes that I wanted to take. I was sort of had to choose maybe three classes that, that could work in, in our budget. And that was really hard for me because I just wanted to be in everything. I, I remember sneaking up to the balcony at the studio and peeking through the curtains to watch other kids take a ballet class or take a jazz class that we couldn't afford to take. And I remember watching that and learning from what they were doing, even though I wasn't able to actually participate in the classes. Um, so that that's my background a little bit. I just loved everything about it. When I finished um, being at the studio, when I graduated from high school, <clears throat> I realized I really didn't have enough training to go on and do anything professionally or really even teach, but I was not done. I just wanted it so badly. So I, I got a job and I started educating myself in other things. I started taking any kind of course or class or uh, certification that there was available. And that's kind of, that's kind of how I got really into it. So once you got really into it, you know, taking all the courses and the certifications that you could, what did you then do with the knowledge that you had gained? So I took all of that knowledge and I started a dance school and I hired really amazing people. You're one of them <laughs> who I could learn from so that I could really provide the very best education possible to the students that I was teaching. And I continued to learn. Uh, I had that dance studio for about 10 years. I absolutely loved the dance studio as well. I loved the students. I loved competing. It was also a multidisciplinary studio. And we were known for a few things, baton twirling, which was also a really big part of my youth, uh, and acrobatics as well. And um, I had two children at, at around the eighth year, and it became obvious to me that I was going to have to make a choice. I realized that I wasn't going to be able to do both well. So I know lots of women are able to make that happen, but for me, I just could tell it wasn't going to be possible for me to run a studio well and to raise my children well. I just didn't have that kind of time. And so it was a really difficult decision for me to, to let the studio go. I, I just like loved everything about being at the studio too. I was there all the time. And so um, I, I finally made that decision to, to close, well, to sell the studio. I didn't actually close it. I sold it to one of the teachers in the studio and actually it's still running today, which makes my heart happy. But um, at that time, all the studios that were around our area, many of the studio owners who were friends of mine, contacted me and said, is there any way that you'd be interested in coming and teaching acrobatics at our studio? Uh, Acro at the time in, in uh, the location where I live was really scarce, hardly any studios offered it. And because we were kind of known for doing that, I got offered a lot of jobs and I quickly realized that I was going to be working every night of the week and weekends too, if I took on these positions. 
And I probably end up in the same position as I was when I owned the studio. I'd be working nights and weekends and, and not seeing my family. And that didn't really appeal to me. So I thought to myself, you know what I'll do? I'll take all the information that I've collected and all of the syllabus that I've put together for our ACRO program. I'll get it all together and I'll give it to the studio owners and they can start their own programs. I'll just teach them what to do and give them the curriculum so that they can run those classes on their own. And so being a bit of an overachiever, I got that all together. I put together, oh my goodness, like pictures and videos and written descriptions and leveled curriculum. And um, I presented it to uh, some of my friends at a studio called Center 58 in Calgary. And when I showed them what I had created, they said, oh my goodness, you have to, everyone needs this. You need to get this out to everyone. You should be selling this. And, and that really made me think, you know, maybe there was a place for this in the industry and maybe it was needed. And uh, so, so what I did at that point was took all of that information, I put it up on a few Facebook sites and it took off like a rocket. It was unbelievable how quickly uh, acrobatic arts became part of what the industry expects. Um, we were training teachers from all over the world within a few years. And it's been really a remarkable journey on how quickly that all took off. Wow. I do remember when acrobatic arts was going through this period of growth. And I must say, it really is quite amazing how much you have accomplished. Now, Mandy, could you tell us how many countries acrobatic arts is in, how many studios, or even how many students are following the syllabus? So we're in over 35 countries right now. I think we're actually close to 40. Um, we are in about 6,300 dance studios. So about a, a half a million dancers participate in acrobatic arts classes every single week. That's a lot of kids going through uh, our programming and using the curriculum that we put together. And, you know, at the beginning, it was just me putting all of that together. But once I realized um, how important this work was for the industry, I brought on uh, some really outstanding people who are experts in their fields. So we have, uh, you know, the physiotherapist from Cirque is part of our, our uh, um, group. We have some of the very best acro teachers in the world who are considered to be, you know, dynasties in acro are part of our organization. We have people who are performers with Cirque du Soleil. We have people who are experts in other areas of, um, you know, sports psychology and nutrition and it, everything is sort of encompassed in what we do. And that's been really beautiful to watch it grow into something that I, I'm super proud of. Mandy, you should be. As, as someone who works for the company, you know, I'm, I'm very proud and I, and I love that it keeps, keeps current with the times and that you're always trying to find the, the next best thing to offer everyone. So it's, it's great that way. Why, why do you think dance studios like offering a set curriculum as opposed to letting the instructor do whatever they want? That's a great question. And, and as a studio owner, I am really clear on the answer for this. When I made curriculum the star of the program, the, the, the teacher can come and go. And I'm not so married to that teacher that I have to be um, you know, almost jailed to, to their demands. And I've seen so many studios run into really major problems because they have a teacher or a couple of teachers who have created and run the entire program. And they feel like they can't really be in control of their own program in their own studio, because if they lose that teacher, they're going to lose all the students. When you use a program like acrobatic arts, it becomes what the studio is about. And you could hire several different acrobatic arts teachers to come in and teach that curriculum. If one of those teachers has to leave for whatever reason, whether there's a, a fight or a disagreement in the studio, or maybe they just move away, the curriculum can continue and the programming can continue. And that means that the parents have a lot more trust in the studio itself and not in a single individual. And I think that that's really important when you're building a business. I mean, there's a million other fringe benefits, uh, including that the curriculum has been created by experts who really understand the progressions and understand the biomechanics of how this uh, acrobatic programming is supposed to fit together. 
probably better than the teacher that you have in your studio. Even if you have a really amazing uh, teacher in your studio, we have over 50 people on staff that are constantly tweaking and improving the syllabus. So I know that we're giving uh, teachers the very best tools possible to create an awesome program. Great. So Acrobatic Arts as a company, these last eight, nine years has been doing great, would you say? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then something like COVID happens. And I know in the industry, you, like many of us, it seemed like the world stopped. Uh, so what was your experience with that? Yeah, I mean, it was it was abrupt. It was crazy. I, I mean, we're all living in this sort of uh, pandemic life that is really uh, like an alternate universe almost. When it first hit, um, I had just traveled from Singapore and uh, where there was a huge outbreak. And this was back in February where hardly anyone even knew what was going on. I became very, very sick and sort, sort of went into like hiding in my basement while we figured out whether or not I had COVID and also when we tried to figure out what was going on with the world. So it was a crazy time uh, for the month of March. And for a little bit of time there, I think everything just sort of like almost stopped completely. But within a few weeks, um, we popped our heads back out of the sand and looked around and, and figured that we better we better get on with it. And so I got together the brightest minds in the company and we worked out ways that we would be able to help the teachers um, keep progressing. So that meant programming for teachers that were new to acrobatic arts who were maybe on a, on a list, they were going to take a certification course and we had to cancel or postpone it. Um, and it also meant supporting teachers who had already gone through our programming and were looking to us for some leadership in that. Uh, so we saw those two, those two needs and we got together and created some really amazing programming that, I, again, I'm super, super proud of. We were able to take our module one course, which is our foundations course, to an online platform and teach it via Zoom so that we had students in our location, the teachers had students in their location, and we were able to teach them how to spot and use our progressions properly, even though we were in a Zoom uh, situation instead of um, being there in person with them. And that has actually worked so well. It's been amazing to see how many teachers have been able to certify through us and, and get really quality information, even though it's in this online format. So that was one piece of the puzzle. We were able to bring our preschool program online, uh, which has been extremely successful. Teachers have been able to take that information and use it both in their online classes and also in person and, and the preschool programming that Acrobatic Arts has created, well, Miss Loren, that you created, um, <laughs> is, it, it is unbelievable. Like, it, it's just so outstanding. The, I, I can't even talk enough about how, how wonderful I think that program is, but that was another thing we were able to bring online. And then another part we did was to uh, give resources to the teachers who had already certified with us. So that meant all kinds of information from printouts that they could use in class to uh, information on how to make Zoom more entertaining and exciting for your students. We gave teachers games and we gave teachers um, variations that they could use with their advanced students and a cardio routine that they could use with their littles. We've given teachers so much information so that they can continue their livelihood and make sure that their ACRO students are progressing, but that they also keep their jobs. So those are all really important pieces that we saw with this COVID thing come in um, and we're able to manage. That's wonderful. What would you say would be the best resources at this time for dance and ACRO teachers that Acrobatic Arts offers and also what's still available from I know, I know there were a lot of resources that Acrobatic Arts gave during the first lockdown, um, but what's still available and maybe what's coming up for teachers? Sure. We have lots available. So our original COVID-19 lockdown website with probably 50 or 60 different links to uh, free resources is still up and available. So teachers can access that and and have all of this free resource available. You can find that by going to Facebook and looking for a, a group called Acro Islands and Zoom. That's the name of the group. And in that group, you'll find all of those resources plus a myriad of other resources that teachers have been kind to donate to that program. 
Um, we have a YouTube page and on our YouTube page, we have tons of free resources as well. So videos with some of your favorite artists, um, explaining how to do skills, showing variations, giving little tips and tricks, things that you can share your screen with your class and, and let them learn how to do, you know, press to handstand drills or things that can be done right there in their own home or on their Acro Island uh, without any danger. And we also launched the Acrodance Resource Center about a month ago, and that is a paid program. It's a subscription, about $35 a month, and teachers can access thousands of videos, all neatly organized and packaged and very, very easy to access. So there are a few different options there for teachers, and depending on, you know, what your budget is at the time, I know lots of teachers do not have any money to spend on things. We do have some free resources, but for those teachers who are maybe teaching every week and, and need resources that they can use um, quickly and easily and that are really well organized, that Acrodance Resource Center is a lifeline for, for many, many teachers. The other beautiful thing about that program is that with the Acrodance Resource Center, you have a student companion app. So you're actually able to give your dancers videos to work on at home um, by just connecting to their, what, what the student app is called is My Acro app. So the My Acro app connects with the Acro Dance Resource Center and teachers are able to give their students videos to practice at home. And that's been also really life-changing for teachers who have been teaching on Zoom, especially if you've been teaching for a long time on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. I know teaching on Zoom, it gets harder and harder to think of things to sort of keep them engaged and yourself as well inspired to keep teaching without the personal interaction. I know you also teach some classes uh, currently, and I think you're back on Zoom as well. So what are you doing with your students to keep them motivated for this upcoming season? Yeah, so yes, I am. I'm back on Zoom. I've got all my little dancers and little boxes. And that's exactly what we've done. We've, I've given them all a copy of the level for, for whatever they're working on through my Acro app. So if you're working on level two, you'll get all the videos for level two. And what we're actually doing is preparing for exams. We're going to do a set of exams in probably about two months. I'm still figuring out where they're coming back after Christmas here. But in about two months, we're going to do a set of exams. And that set of exams we will be able to do no matter what the world looks like. So if the world is back to normal, we'll go into the studio, we'll have the examiner in, it'll be great. If the world is still on Zoom, we can offer exams and the kids can do their exams through Zoom, either in their own studio or in their own home, even if we don't have access to the studio. And that gives my dancers a real tangible goal that's actually gonna happen. I don't know if competition is gonna happen for sure yet this year or not. If it doesn't, at least they're going to have this exam where they can go in, show the work that they've been pr practicing, have a real tangible goal and achieve something, a certificate or maybe even a medal if they get distinction in their exams. So that's going to be it, it already has been extremely motivating for me and the students. We have something to work towards. And once you have a goal like that, all of a sudden class becomes important again. And it matters whether or not you show up and teachers are, I know for me as a teacher, I'm on them. I'm checking to make sure that their hips are square and their legs are straight and they're, you know, they're showing extension in line and all of the really important things, because I know that if they don't, they're not going to get a very good score on their exam. So that's been really motivating for me as a teacher and for the dancers. Now, the exams that Acrobatic Arts offers, you mentioned that they can be in studio or on Zoom if, if that's where you are in the, in the world. Um, but how would your students, what if they don't have access to the studio even? What if the studio is, is in lockdown? They can actually do their exam online through Zoom from their home, from their basement, from, from wherever they're practicing in their house. Uh, we have had many studios go through that program and the kids are are doing the work. And the thing about the acro exam is uh, most of it, there are a few skills that need, need some space, but the majority of the skills can be done in a fairly small amount of space. You know, showing your splits, doing your plank, showing a handstand, doing a bridge, all of those things can be done in a pretty small space. So dancers have been able to actually take their exams right from their own homes, even if they're on complete lockdown. That's awesome. I, I think everyone does need a goal at this point. And it's, it's nice to know that that goal won't be taken away from anyone, that they can achieve it no matter what. 
So can you tell us any uh, new exciting things that Acrobatic Arts is working on? Oh, there's so many exciting things. We are constantly, as you said earlier in this episode, we're constantly pushing to see what we can develop next, who we can partner with, what the latest and greatest things are that we can offer, both the people who've already come through our programming and for new people. So just a few examples, we have some amazing partnerships that are coming forward. So, um, Apollo Shocks, we have a partnership with them and we're producing some videos that help teachers understand how their shocks, which is like an, uh, an athletic sock that's almost like a shoe, um, can help with their acrobatics. I think that's going to be really um, Im important as we move back into the studio and dancers aren't allowed to be barefoot in the studio anymore. So that's a really exciting partnership that we've we've been working on. We've been working on a partnership with uh, Relative Motion, which is Jamie Goodwin's company. Uh, they have these anatomical leggings that show where all of the major muscle groups are. And we've been creating videos for their program as well, um, which our teachers also have access to. All of the things that we do with these other organizations, our teachers get access to through the Acrodance Resource Center at no cost. So those videos, some of them are already up and show how different muscle groups work to make a side aerial happen, for example, which has been really exciting and educational as well for, for me and for everyone in the company. So that's been really fun. We're working with a few organizations to partner with them to offer acrobatics through their syllabi. So uh, ATOD and Calm Dance in Australia, uh, IPATH in the UK, and we're working on a few others that we can't really talk about quite yet. Those organizations are going to partner with Acrobatic Arts so that they can offer acro to their, um, their whole group of people, everyone who follows their syllabus, and they don't have to reinvent the wheel and try to come up with an acro syllabus. They're just going to use ours because Quite frankly, it's the best in the industry. So that has been really exciting. We have a lot of other little projects that are kind of uh, top secret right now, but we, we are always growing. We're always looking for um, how we can support teachers better. So we better just keep our eye on acrobatic arts so that we don't miss out on any of this wonderful stuff that's coming out. So Mandy, just before we end, one thing that I've always admired about you uh, is, is your ability to run a great business. Uh, and even, you know, during pandemic, I, I think that proves that fact even more that you continue to run a really good business. What is one piece of advice that you would give to business owners moving forward? I'm going to give you two, actually, because I've had time to think about this question. I knew you were going to ask me this. And uh, and I get asked it all the time, honestly. Uh, the first thing I would say is just do it. Get out there and just do it. Uh, lots of people try to make everything perfect before they'll put anything out. And that doesn't really work. Often what happens then is that you spend all this time making things better, making things perfect, making things better. That's where you spend all of your time, spending more money, getting more information, creating, reformatting it, getting a better picture before you'll put anything out. And then nothing ever actually gets out. And my advice would be put it out there and then keep working on it. I like to say that none of our projects are ever complete. All of our, you know, our Acrodance Resource Center and all of our videos can always be improved upon. And we've created a, a programming that allows us to change things out very quickly. When, when I find a better walkover, I take the one that's on the app off and I put the better one on so that it's constantly getting better and better and better. But I had to initially get it out there. I had to say, you know, done is better than perfect. And so, and that is a really important thing that I see lots of business owners or people who want to be entrepreneurs fail at. So that would be my first piece of advice. My second piece of advice is find people who are better than you and get them involved. Find people who have skills that are not your skills and get them involved. Try not to surround yourself with people who do the same thing as you. Try to surround yourself with people who do, who challenge you, who do things differently than you do, who don't like the way you do things all the time, who ask you, you know, why are you doing it that way? That is going to make you better. And I think another error I see people make when they're trying to start a business is they get people who all agree on the same thing together to make, to make the business run. And that might cause you know very little friction and there might not be any fighting but I think it also really limits how far you can go most of the people who I work with 
highly disagree with me on a daily basis. And I think that that's been one of the secrets to our success. Great. Now, just a, just a, maybe a fun question. What's the one thing you're missing right now in life, in your life, uh, and, and that you maybe can't wait to do once things hopefully get back to normal? Oh, uh, Loren, I, I have not spent an entire winter in Canada in probably a decade. It's snowy and cold out there, and I haven't been able to just put on my flip-flops and go you know, to the beach in a really long time. And that is not normal for me. Normally I make my schedule so that this time of year I'm in Australia or somewhere beautiful. Uh, so I'm really missing the traveling part of my job. I'm missing seeing all the people. I'm missing the weather. I'm missing the cultures. So I can hardly wait to get um, on an airplane again. Um, one of the things that I missed dearly this year was our time when we get the whole staff together. And normally we go somewhere together that's really nice and we sort of celebrate our accomplishments of the year and we get together and we fight out what we're going to do for the next year and we were supposed to go to Cancun this uh, fall and we didn't get to do that so I can hardly wait for everything to open up again so that we can make those things happen again so that I can go to Cancun and put on my flip-flops and I can go to New York and watch a show and be inspired by the people who are on the stage who are living their dreams I miss all of those things that I, I feel like I don't really have here in my little office in Canada. I'm sure there's lots of us that feel the same way. So here's hoping that in a year we're in a different position, but it's very inspiring of you sort of to lead the way to show us that not everything has to stop and that we can keep going and even make things better. Thank you very much, Mandy. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Lauren. This is fun. There you have it, the philosophy of acrobatic arts in a nutshell. Be passionate, put in the hard work, learn as much as you can, know when to pivot, and finally never give up on yourself. Thanks for listening and have a great day.